All right, yeah, that whole walkthrough where they walk in, this character moment here, that's all work that we had to do. In a second, they're gonna clash, they're gonna give dialogue here. This is all the stuff I had to do for the eight characters that I got to work on. This is the loading screen now for MK1, which is a big game changer, I think, because they use the Unreal Engine 5. So all of that, that was all work we had to do, and it's all separate departments that work on these things. There's so many different departments within the MK team. I would say Kenshi's a little bit slower than a lot of the other characters I worked on, but I wanted to focus more on power hits with his movement. And again, I had the guidance of Carlos to really help me understand what I needed to do here. It's actually, you guys are gonna roast me. I already freaking know, I'm gonna get so much heat for this, but I didn't even know who Kenshi was. <laughs> So I didn't know too much about Kenshi, and I was like, cool, blind swordsman, got it. I grew up on Zatuichi, which is, if you guys know, you know. So I told Carlos, I was like, okay, so Zatuichi vibes, and he's like, yes, think blind swordsman, and that's kind of a huge inspiration for me, what I did. Yep, I love those stabs, super clean. I love the trailing of the energy off the sword. So you can see the swipes way cleaner. Shout out to the animators, man. You guys just absolutely killed this game. Coming up with the low block, that low stance. Let's see if we can get him to do it one more time. But when he goes down, he has to have this block position. I remember pointing the sword and thinking, I was like, that's not really a block, but it looked cool. And the animators loved it. They're like, yeah, great. That looks super cool. I was like, okay. It's not really a blocking position, but it's Mortal Kombat, right? Oh, oh, and here, oh, yep, yep. That's me getting messed up. I wanna see his fatality. Okay, one of the infamous fatalities. I felt so stupid doing this in studio <laughs> because if you watch what I do, I literally just had to be here and and they're like, cut, that was perfect. Great, let's move on. <laughs> the ending one was cool. So that was, that was pretty fun to do. But a lot of the fatalities is really funny. I felt so dumb doing it, because they're like, yeah, we just need like one move and make it look cool. I'm like, okay. They're like, perfect, we're gonna add explosions. The whole world's gonna go on fire. It's gonna look great, Noah. So the other character I did was the human form of reptile. And the reason I say human form was we actually had another performer. He was so awesome to watch work. He was kind of the only person I got to really work with in studio. His name is Chris McClure. I hope I said that right, Chris. But he's an incredible performer. And every time that he would transform into the monster version, that was all Chris. It was really difficult to come up with another unique fighting style because I did so many other characters, especially all of the ninja form characters. They're like, we need something that has a little bit of that like animal style movements a little bit more. So I was like, okay, I wanted to do something a little bit more hunched in. And instead of doing like traditional tiger claws, I wanted to like bring my hands in a little bit more in the way I would move on certain things. I think I did some leopard hits or leopard punch which is, this is kind of the hand texture, if we can see that correctly here. So for Liu Kang, I did the Phoenix Punch. For Reptile, I did uh, leopard style punches with the front hits. I also changed my back kick a lot for this too. So it was just a complete different style. And I was thinking about if I was kicking, how would I kick with a tail in mind? That's such a weird sentence to say out loud, but it is something I definitely tried to think about and hopefully the movements are very different. I had a little bit less creative freedom with Reptile in his bigger style attacks, but all of those punches, those dashes, the kicks, that's all me. That is 100% all me. Yeah, that alligator roll, it was awesome to watch Chris get paid to do that. <laughs> he literally was on the floor rolling around and we would blend movement. So I would be the one to start the movement. This is all Chris right here. I literally watched him like jump on this like thing and pretend to like eat the air. And his body posture of like how he like comes up out of it and pretends to like spit out the character was so cool to watch. 
Where there's smoke, there's fire. This is probably one of my favorite characters I got to do. When I first got the call, I was the first performer they ever granted rehearsals. And I remember Smoke being a little bit more of a blank character in the game, not having a strong emphasis on a specific style. And the original concept art, he actually held a normal knife. I was like, hey guys, what if I give him a karambit and I do this other style of martial arts called Pinjaxi Lop? I actually got trained a little bit by Chechep Arif, who is very famous for the Raid series, John Wick, John Wick 3, Star Wars, and his entire stunt team. So I'm very, very blessed and lucky to be able to learn Pinjaxi Lot, because I brought that to life with Smoke here. They kept so much of my hand textures, flipping the blade around and doing all those knife things. So it was really fun to be able to do here. Part of Smoke for me was really slowing down the movements and making all the knife hits very intentional. Seeing how I swipe the blade, seeing the direction, because normal knife work, I would be so much quicker, which doesn't really translate to video games entirely well. So it's always finding that balance of like speed and slowing it down a little bit with intention. So one of the interesting things is like pretending that the blade is actually in the rear hand they needed to be able to blend and switch. So Smoke would always throw and I'd pretend to catch and then it's already in this front hand here. So I had to do a lot of that and pretend that it was in one hand just so I can flip and switch to the other hand. Stuff I've never even had to think about that I had to work hard at. <laughs> so yeah, this is a karambit for those of you guys that don't know. It's a curved blade weapon that's again, very famously used in Pinjaxi Lot. It's also very well known in Filipino style martial arts. It's a fun little crazy blade. And this is not real. This is a, a film prop. <laughs> there is a huge difference between acting martial arts and, and then actually doing real martial arts. Well, one, speed and power, especially power is irrelevant in film right? Like me actually hitting somebody doesn't really exist. I'd say the main, main difference is showing real emphasis in the movement for, for film fighting. So if I'm actually using the karambit, I'm not going to exaggerate my hits. I'm just going to go straight for the kill. And I want there to be some speed in the movements here. Just quick hit. But if I slow down the movement, I widen the hit and I make the line very apparent. Boom have in that energy here, you can see a lot more of what I'm doing versus boom, just hit and I'm still tucked inside. So a small little demonstration. All right, Kung Lao, my other boy I got to work with. So here we are, I did all of Kung Lao's attacking movements. So if you're ever playing the game, I only really focus on all the attacking movements. This is all me. And the rolling punches are inspired by Wing Chun, which I definitely did train a lot of. But I had to learn so many new soft style martial arts. I was actually, surprisingly, the most sore from doing Kung Lao, if you believe it or not, because of my shoulder. So I just being in this position for eight hours, my shoulders were burnt out. So I go back home and I'm like, oh my God, my shoulders are weak. I need to work on my shoulders. So it kind of uh, helped me change the way that I trained for Kung Lao a little bit, just to stay in this position here. Yeah, I mean, using the hat was, of course, a really big thing. I remember having to do all the taunts where I would like wipe the brim, flick the hat, pull it down, flip it back up, put it on. Even just like being in stance, like throwing the, the hat here, throwing it, catching it, putting it back on, being back in stance. I had to do all of that stuff for weeks and months on end doing Kung Lao. It was quite interesting working on Kung Lao and Raiden because I know that, you know, I got all early access into the backstory and the lore of each character. And since they were doing an entirely fresh new approach to all characters, they wanted everybody really to feel like they had something new to prove. So they're like, we have a, a newer, younger approach to Kung Lao and Raiden but they, they wanted his energy to feel like he had a lot more to prove in this game. Yeah, that ridge hand, I actually learned training with Simon Ree. Um, if you guys know Simon and Philip Ree, Master Ree would use that a lot in sparring. And that was one move that would always get me. So shout out to Master Ree's ridge hand. 
That's in Kung Lao's movements now. Disgusting. I love it. Oh my god, Liu Kang. This might be my number one favorite character I got to work on. I have so many insane stories about doing Liu Kang. Just the conversations of what they were talking to me about. Think if Bruce Lee became a time god. He's a little bit more mature, he's a little bit older. He has a lot less of that like no swipe energy constantly throughout the fight. Now we see sprinkles of it. Now mind you, in the 60s, Bruce Lee and all his friends, nobody was doing flying kicks. It wasn't a thing. So it wasn't like a trained skill. It wasn't, it was just something that they were just trying to do for the movies. And the way he was doing it isn't the way that it's taught now. And I remember getting ready. I step up, I try to give like the most swagged out flying sidekick and I reach my arms across like Bruce Lee always does this with his flying sidekicks, but my legs really making sure the kick has these beautiful lines. I do the kick and I land. The entire studio is quiet. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna beat that one because I felt like it was good. It's like they hated that. And then right away the animators are like, genuine, I did not say this, okay? This is them. They're like, literally that was way better than Bruce Lee's flying sidekick. They're like, that was it, one and done, move on. I have only done one Liu Kang flying sidekick and that is the one that you guys see in the game. He, he paved the way. Now we have a scientifically trained way of doing flying kicks. Think about it, I've been doing that kick since I was probably four years old. So it's over 20 plus years for that one moment to just hit it one and done. And that was it. It was, it was seriously insane. Oh, good old Megan Fox. <laughs> one fight. That is his new bicycle kick. That was like a whole other thing that I had to develop. So I combined my flying side kick, my jump back kicks, and then cheat seven back kicks. So it was a combination of three or four different kicks that we had to blend all together. And that was my idea. And they were like, we need a new version of the bicycle kick. And I was like, okay, I have an idea. What if I'm rotating and spinning attacking versus just a normal foot pedal attack? I showed them and they freaking love it. And we ran with it, it was crazy. So, um, but for the martial arts, obviously a lot of my kicks are Taekwondo inspired. But his hand textures, they wanted to start off with what we call Bak Mei Pai, which is white eyebrow style Kung Fu. Um, so we did that. And then as you develop a little bit more, we have that JKD Bruce Lee style taunts with Liu Kang. I literally had to jump in the air and pretend I was shooting fireballs like this. <laughs> so that was one of the moves. Yep, all of this, that's me. And his ready stance that I developed is a tiger claw on the bottom and what I call, a, not me, but Chinese style is called a phoenix punch here or phoenix fist. So this is Liu Kang's ready stance right here. And I remember doing his kicks and putting my hands behind the back because I did, I did his like single leg kicks, which is like, is it hook round side or something like that? I can't remember. But I remember doing it and they were like, it needs more energy, like more swagged out type of personality. So I was like, what if I just put my hands behind my back? And I did that, they freaking loved it. So we ran with so much. I felt stupid doing that. Literally all I had to do was, they're like, it's gonna look awesome, Noah, perfect. And then I had to land and do that pose down. Come up, yep. Fatality, Liu Kang. Liu Kang, baby. Your brother is wanted for- It was quite interesting to do Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Because of the pandemic, Carlos had to jump in the mocap suit because they couldn't fly anybody in. And he had done a lot of Scorpion's movements. That's all me right here. But Carlos had to do a lot of Scorpion's movements and it was a combination of Carlos and I to do Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Weirdly enough, I mean, it makes sense once I explain it, but Sub-Zero and Scorpion were my least favorite characters to do. Not that they weren't fun. It was just, there were a lot of politics involved with these two characters. There are massive departments that, that are heavily tied in to these two characters. And they had a lot of people that already knew exactly what they wanted. So this was one of the times where I understood, yes, I was hired to give a lot more creative freedom in the characters, but I also know when to keep my mouth shut, when to listen. I know that there are other people that have worked very, very hard on these characters. 
and I'm just there to be a team player. So I'm like, okay guys, just tell me what to do. I think there were a few, there was like one time where I was like, hey, what if I try this? And they were like, Carlos was like, they're super set on doing it one specific way for these guys. I was like, no problem at all. So I didn't give my input for a lot of these characters here, or Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Round two, fight. What's interesting is that Scorpion uses a roped weapon called a Kusarigama. It's kind of like a comma. So this is a comma, and this is a very ghetto makeshift rig of a Kusarigama. We literally duct taped the rope to the bottom because <laughs> we don't really have one. But in studio, I got to use a little bit of it. Now, a good training weapon to be able to understand this is the rope dart. Very popular in Chinese style martial arts. I am god awful at it. Carlos is so freaking cool. So he just, <clears throat> he would go to the side and just practice, just show me how to use it. A lot of the weapons, I got to actually use the weapon and practice it on set and record it. So the one where he's twirling it side to side, side to side, side to side, I actually used a mocap version of a Kusarayama. Um, there were tons of stuff where it's like, get over here, boom. I use nothing. I just, all acting, pretend that I have it in my hand, throw it, boom, pull back, and then go into stance here. The infamous Sub-Zero. I was so excited to do this character. And I remember in the briefing and the rehearsals, they said Sub-Zero was going to have a lot more intensity in this game. That speared movement, that was all me. And Scorpion was gonna be a little bit more passive and soft in the way he would fight. So they're really flipping the two in this game. And they wanted a lot stronger of hits from Sub-Zero in this game. And I remember watching Carlos Pensino really bring this to life for me. I would watch Carlos really bring Sub-Zero to life in the way that he would like flex and pose and move as Sub-Zero. It was so beautiful to watch him work. And again, slowing down my movements to feel the intention of Sub-Zero. But Sub-Zero is really difficult because he has a lot of soft style movements where he would bring his hands in with the ice and then go into hard hits. Hit, strong hits here and then back into soft style where it's like, I don't know how to explain it. The body softens, but the hands stay hard here. And he has this time kind of texture here where he hits and then brings it in. And he has this like, I would, I would think a little bit of pride, but I didn't even know he was gonna be um, leading the Lin Kuei in this game. But that's what they wanted out of him working as Sub-Zero. I had to do that punch, that block. I had to do so much of that middle block. Developing the middle blocks and the low blocks was a huge part of what I had to do for work. For Sub-Zero, I definitely slowed down my kicks. I tried to make them less whippy and snappy. I gave that to Liu Kang. So I, if Liu Kang is kicking in that way, I wanted Sub-Zero to be slower and I wanted the animators to give him a little bit more power hits with his kick, so I tried to do that. A lot of these uh, videos is usually the guy losing. <laughs> Why did they give me footage of them losing? I need to see them do their fatalities. Well, that's Sub-Zero and Katana wins. <laughs> it was definitely an incredible experience and I'm very lucky to have worked on it, but more importantly, it evolved me as an artist. So I love opportunities where I get to grow, learn, and just do the damn thing. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Gameology. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you guys want to train with me online, you can go to OSU Films, osfilms.com, and you guys can go to my YouTube channel. I hope to see you guys next time. Take care. Os.